So I wanted to share with you some of my updated control options that I have in terms of force feedback. So if we go to controls here, this isn't going to be like a super in-depth thing here. We've got wheel, real automatic, disabled, uh, steering sensitivity. Now, the default is internal friction. To give you some perspective, that's considered 50. Okay. So I have the adaptive or the, uh, sorry, the steering sensitivity, a little bit under 50. Steering non-linearity. We have force feedback on, which you can completely turn off. Overall gain. Again, always use this 50 as a baseline here. So we could see that the left of the knob here at overall gain lines up with the right part of the internal friction at 50. So 55, 60, whatever you want to call that, just the overall gain. I cranked up the centering at the high speed all the way to the end. I slightly lowered the centering at low speed. Again, left internal friction at the, the, fa the default, the, the face. Engine resonance. This is like probably at like five and what it does, and I used to have it a little bit higher and I didn't like it because my mouse would jiggle around on the table and essentially it would look like there was an earthquake when I was in the truck. But by having it at just such a very minute number, it gives you just a little bit of that rumble in the steering wheel so that when you're driving, even on a flat surface, a little bit of the rumbling of the engine, you're just going to feel it enough that it's not going to shake your mouse at all. So it's incredible for me. It's incredible. Maybe it's going to suck for you. Terrain surface. Don't want it too hog wild. Uh, bumps. I have them up a little bit so that you can feel them. I mean, to be honest with you, you could probably just bring it back down to 50. Probably doesn't make that big of a difference. Collisions, again, when you bash into other people. Again, that internal friction is the default. So if we line up the middle of the mouse, a little bit off here is where I've got the gearbox grind, as well as the understeer slip. Now, what's interesting about these that are grayed out, and I think it has to do with the 1.47 update that's going to be coming out soon, you're actually going to be able to adjust the vibration just as it says right there literally terrain surface vibration so how much of that is going to vibrate uh this is the feedback this is the vibration i hope i'm not screwing this up to me they're almost the same so i don't know it's kind of weird like what happens if you have bumps all the way up but you have this all the way down versus this all the way up and that all the way down i don't know i don't know Steering axis dead zone, pretty much right to the full left. Centered joy accelerator, acceleration axis dead zone, axis mode inverted. Then for joy brake, brake axis dead zone. Kind of get a, a, an idea based on where it is. You just kind of read through each thing here. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't even think I touched any of those. I don't have an H shifter yet i don't know if i'll ever get one i just got so much crap a ring light a dslr camera professional studio monitors a switch an xbox a playstation a computer i just got so much crap all these controllers and all that here we can see that uh i pretty much haven't touched anything else but i figured that i would go through the entire uh controls thing to show you essentially what i've done with my uh with my setup and with all this i'm enjoying the game more i mean i i just i am to me it, it's it's making a nice little difference i might have to work on that on that paint job right now bear with me here there we go I'm just kind of driving this right now with no trailer whatsoever. Just kind of wanted to get a feel. And with all those little bumps in the road and everything and with the resonance of the engine, it is just absolutely insane how much more realistic it is. And I've been driving for so long 
without having further micro adjusted my settings. And again, the feedback doesn't have to be strong at all. It doesn't have to be like completely shaking you like a San Francisco earthquake. Good thing we're in Texas here. So go ahead and potentially play around with that. I mean, it's not gonna ruin your settings. I mean, maybe back up your settings before you start playing around with these. I'm always looking to improve. Sometimes I'll look at three or four different people's uh, settings and then I'll kind of like mix them up, like do a combination and I'll try like one person and be like, no, these sliders I don't like. Where did somebody else have it? Or quite frankly, I just experiment on my own. But I like to have a baseline, like I'll take a screenshot of all the settings that I've changed so that if something goes hog wild and I don't like it, I can just go back to what I had before. So just driving through Texas here. And that's it. Like, I mean, I, I'm just getting ready, essentially, for things to come with that 1.47 update with those couple of things that I showed you there. Really going to be interesting to see how that plays out because I already feel like it's really realistic to begin with the handling and all that. Like, I mean, I'm just so addicted. Like, I thought I was addicted before. Oh no, I'm addicted now. Another thing I unfortunately had to do, even though I have a new computer and it's quite powerful and I can run Red Dead Redemption 2 fully cranked to the max. 60 FPS, this game, although it's fully completely maxed, I had to make one small adjustment, unfortunately. And it makes a little bit of a difference visually, like I can notice it, and it's the resolution scaling. Let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick in case you're wondering what in the blue pineapple I'm talking about. It's this part right here. It's the scaling. So essentially at like 400%, it's probably going to give you like a fake 4K upscaled. And uh, you can see the drop down here. 400 was just too much in that sometimes during a turn, I would end up uh, getting some like drop in frames. It would drop down like 53 FPS, which is still good, but it isn't because when you're dropping back and forth, it just kind of makes things go a little bit wonky and I don't like that but everything else is set up uh, to the max I don't think you can go any higher than that and then when it comes to gameplay there's another little touch of something that I did that I wanted to share with you here and that is the following steering on the center da, 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 where the hell is it? We got the rain sensor, steering auto center keyboard on the gamepad only, automatic engine. I I decided to put on realistic uh, fuel consumption just to kind of somewhat have some more realism. Steering camera rotation. So this is really, really cool. And how much of a factor it is, I left it at 50. So that right there. When I make a turn, instead of like going like this, right? Helps if I'm driving in a straight line. Uh, that just doesn't ha Here, let me just stop on the side of the road and pretend like I'm gonna turn. Well, I'm not gonna pretend, I'm actually gonna turn. See what's happening? Look at that. It's actually like turning the steering, er, my vision. I keep driving like this, I'm gonna need that ambulance. So just, again, these are just subtle little changes. I mean, I don't always need, you know, that rear view mirror. I mean, this looks cleaner naturally, but if I want to turn to switch lanes, I can't tell if it's safe. Now I can, and because I'm driving a Kenworth W900, I don't need the one on the left because the way that I'm seated in the truck, which is more or less the default here, I can see on the left perfectly fine. And then because, again, driving W900, I don't need, uh, no, that's not the button. Helps if I remember, no, 
Holy macaroni. I really hate... There we go. When that stuff happens. Nope. I don't... I don't need that. That's really annoying. Where the hell... No, that's not it either. That was just to pause the game. <laughs> Where the hell is it? Oh, it is F3. Are you serious? See the, uh, the GPS there? Because I have that add-on to keep everything at the bottom, so... There I've got the GPS overlay, which I mean is fine for trucks that don't have the built-in GPS. But it, it's also a little bit distracting, because if I move around like this or I'm in certain other trucks... Yeah, we're taking damage. That's okay. Shit happens. I just find it's, uh, it's annoying. There we go. And as you can tell here, with all the little bumps, even though you don't feel them on your end, my mouse isn't moving, because before it, it, it would go like this with that engine resonance. You really gotta watch out for that. Anyways, just a quick little whatever. I don't even know what you want to call this. I think I'm gonna pull in and get my truck repaired. We're in Wichita Falls, Texas. Not that that really matters. Is he yielding to me? Well, I guess he is. I guess I'm just gonna go there. We can see in the mirror that it is safe. See, I had a little bit of a frame drop there. That can happen sometimes. Not too often, but it can happen. I'm not too... See, sometimes if I go to turn left, I'll just check. And now I'm not using the mouse. This is all, like, in the game. I don't know how long that setting has been in there for. But it is absolutely... Appreciated. There's no doubt about it, because I don't have a tubby, toby, tick-tocky, whatever that thing is, head-tracking movement. I think that would actually probably drive me insane, if I could be perfectly honest. I don't know that I would actually enjoy that. Even this, sometimes I feel like I have to sort of, kind of, not really fix it. Hey, 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 don't you be advancing! I don't even know where my gas is at. Oh, it helps if I looked at the bottom. This again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop the engine. I'm pretty much like 90% gas. And it still cost me 300 bucks for 172. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have a really psycho sized uh, gas tank. Cisterns. We're going to be able to buy those in the next update, too. I forgot about that. Uh, right now I look a little bit dazed and confused because how I mean, is it around here? I'm trying to repair the truck while I'm at it. That little 1%. I want to see... That's... There we go. Why would I want to stop? Oh, that's, I think, to, uh, to sleep. Ah! Yeah, exactly. Don't want to be banging into that truck, although... Probably wouldn't matter now. There, now we can go... And repair the truck. $1,300. Whatever. Yeah, so... Whatever. Whatever this was. Whatever we want to call this. I don't even think I'm going to name this an episode, really. This was just, uh... Oh, and we did make it. Okay, yeah, see, we did unlock it. We got that yellow dot. I'm probably going to go in this direction now. Not going to... Not going to record that, though. Ooh, the magical X. And now because I moved it, yeah, 
Like, I had to recenter it, right? Obviously, if I move the mouse and then the camera goes goosey, it's not just going to recenter it on its own. So, this is me here. I might as well not do that there. Now that's the auto turning of the camera. Maybe it is an episode. I really don't know. I think it is, because we're driving. We're doing some shit. So you might as well. And by uh, discovering some of these locations, it just makes it so that I can fast travel to more areas, uh, pick up more jobs, because, you know, I don't have enough room as it is to navigate to pick up some jobs. I really am excited and I don't know why to buy my own trailer my own cistern cistern is that what they call it cistern sissy cisgender oh, I don't freaking know I'm not a trucker I'm a virtual trucker I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time I just know that I absolutely love this shit more than you'll ever imagine that's all I can tell you and I am a little bit tempted to put back the speed limiter. Just to make it a little bit more realistic. No one's zipping at 150 kilometers an hour, which is like 90 miles an hour down these streets. It's just not realistic. Plus, it makes the game work a little bit harder, too, because everything's got to render in. But yeah. Anyhow. So that's my settings. That's what I'm working with here. Actually, I'll do one last thing. I promise. This is a bit of a special episode here. We can uh, trail. Let's just go to trailer manager. Let's just see. Oh, I got a reefer. Got a reefer, man. Container carrier. Yeah. I did not buy the DLC. I might do it just to support them. Right now, I'm trying to support myself where there's actual name brand. Uh, see? Oh, food tank. Okay, so we can already have those. Oh, yeah, those are the devil, man. Those multi-section ones. I mean, once you turn in, if you goosed it and you got to back up, you are done. Trailer purchase. Let's go ahead and look at some of the trailers. Uh, we have these bottom dumpers. Those have been there for a while. For some reason, I'm looking at it like, hmm, I've never really spent a lot of time here. One of the things I don't like, yeah, fuel tank. What? I'm kind of confused. D-shaped tank. I don't know, food tank. We'll have to take a look. Flammable liquids is what you're able to carry. Yeah. Did they add them to the game? There's bulk feed and dry feed. Flatbed double. One of the reasons I don't like buying my own trailer and doing jobs. Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at that. Oh, this makes me think of the, uh, like the Australian big trucker convoys there when they got like multiples of those. Those look actually pretty badass. Yeah, like if we go to do a job and we do, uh, well, I can't do with my own trailer because I don't have one attached. Get hired as a professional driver. No fuss. Everything's provided. Yeah, with my own truck. I'll give you an example here. Like these big wide load things, like the, the wide load things are the ones where you get escorted and whatnot i've never been able to get any of these big whopping jobs even the one where you carry vehicles by having your own trailer so i feel like there's a greater variety when it comes to just doing a job with your own trailer does that make sense so that's why i just i've never really bothered can't carry a helicopter or a house or any of that kind of stuff with my own trailer. And maybe it is possible and I've just never been able to. I don't know, but I've never, ever, ever seen it. And again, you can select what kind of hazardous or, you know, if you want livestock or whatever, you can filter through that. So just in case you're wondering why I've never really bothered with the trailer, 
But now that we're able to carry all these crazy liquids and it's shiny and it's chrome, don't ask. Might buy my own, but I can already carry fuel, it seems like. So I am going to save my game here. Welcome to the Matrix. Clean just means uh, before I picked up any STDs on the road there. No, it's uh, before I used any uh, add-ons. The only add-ons I use is uh, having the mirrors flush in the corner rather than having them down a bit. Having like the real border around. I'm like, what the hell is that junk? No idea. Let's go and back out. Synchronization. And then when we go... No, we were there. We had it. When we go to the store page, we'll uh, take a quick gander at this here. It is right here. This is what I'm talking about. Ownable gas cisterns. So we can already have the gas thing, but in 1.47 beta right now and coming soon, are you, re are you ready to haul your very own gas cistern? Right, so we could already. As we covered in a previous blog, ownable gas cisterns are available in this update. These trailers will come with a variety of lengths, chassis, and customization options. These cisterns are designed to transport dangerous and highly flammable gases, such as ethane, propane, and LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. So maybe it allows for more variety of these flammable gas that the gas tank one that's chrome that i just showed you can't carry i don't know so that's the part where i'm confused however please keep in mind that as of now in game economy for these trailers and also the list of available cargos are still a work in progress the ownable gas cisterns for american truck simulator will be available as a single or b double trailer maybe that's what we don't have is that double i don't know It'll also include five chassis types, 32, 43, 48, two axle, and 53, three axle, and a four axle, 53 foot with a steerable rear axle. Hmm. Each gas cistern comes with over 50 accessories, which includes, but are not limited to, paintable chrome boxes, paintable chrome valve covers, customizable side lamps, paintable wing, variety of hoses, variety of fender. So maybe it's just more customization. Because again, I saw this in my game. I'm going to have to go back and take a peek. Then there's going to be better like world ambient sounds. You're going to be able to hear chirping crickets at different distances and stuff like that. Adaptive cruise control, which is really nice, which was experimental back in 1.44. Custom intros for Utah and Idaho. I don't care about that. No offense. Random road bumps. That's going to be really, really cool. Excited to introduce the random road bumps in 1.47. These small bumps are procedurally generated to give the roads an imperfect feel to them. While they may not be visible to the actual driver, you'll be able to feel these subtle bumps and in some cases hear them affect your vehicle while driving. That is insane because it's an added layer of realism detail to the game. Like it's, I just, I can't wait for that career history UI redesign. So all these things economy reset teleport there's the change log right there if you're curious to look at that but uh, yeah that's going to be coming out pretty soon so i think it's with that thing with the road bumps that we're going to be able to select those three sliders i showed earlier on at least so i think i don't know i've never seen them before i don't recall seeing them now they're grayed out but it also doesn't really talk about it in here mind you i've been kind of skipping through them yeah i'll just have to uh oh i don't know i'll have to take another look but i don't recall this talking about those three sliders though the vibration of the rope bump it's probably gonna come out with the procedurally generated thing i'm guessing anyhow that's it for this video as always if you liked it a thumbs up, as it does greatly help support that channel with the algorithm. And if you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. And I'll bend it in half, and I'll twist it, and then I'll grab your hand, and I'll make you backhand yourself. And essentially what you're going to have is procedurally generated bumps on your noggin, on your forehead from... Anyways. And if you want to subscribe, naturally that would be great. But if not... Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care.
and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.